Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Prologue, Clowns on the Run, Part 2. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. His crimson hair, a red sheen deeper than blood, fluttered in the wind. His crimson eyes, glimmering gold and silver stars, gazed down at Yuki arrogantly. Yo, I think this is the first time we've met. You've done well to catch my attention. Guy's gaze was locked on Yuki. No one else was worthy of his eyes. That fact wasn't lost on Yuki, but he was conflicted over how that made him feel. When Footman was easily beaten by misery, he could measure just how strong they were. Or rather, he could tell by the color of their hair and by those special maid suits. Kigali, also known as Kazarium, and Clayman had mentioned these people. These three fit the bill. In other words, the person in front of him stood at the top of the world. His position was Yuki's end goal. As long as his ambition was to conquer the world, he would have to clash with this enemy one day. Is that so? You must be the so-called strongest demon lord, Guy Crimson. It's an honor to meet you. My name is Yuki Kagurazaka. I never expected you to come to me. Were you looking to team up? Yuki mustered a smile without being intimidated by Guy. Naturally, that was just wishful thinking. He could tell just by looking at how Misery was handling Footman right now. It was plain as day that Guy and his maids did not come to forge any alliances. Even though he was faced with overwhelming danger, Yuki still tried to put on a friendly tone. This was his unique way of negotiating. He would often throw out a wild statement to get a reaction, in an attempt to gauge his enemy's intentions. Ah ha ha ha, you're an interesting fellow, you've got plenty of guts to be saying that straight to my face. Now that's not a bad proposition, but you seem to be Leon's enemy. Besides, weren't you planning to head east? I personally don't want Rudra to accrue any more power. Negotiations failed. Yuki knew from the beginning that Guy would not accept the silly proposal. But he didn't let that discourage him, instead reading Guy's words more deeply. Rudra is the name of the Emperor of the Eastern Empire, the Nazca Namriam Ulmeria United Eastern Empire. He thought the two had some kind of relationship, one obviously with bad blood. He couldn't help but fight with Guy. They had no chance of escaping unscathed. Under these circumstances, he also cannot use fraud. Of all the other options blacked out, his best bet was going all out against Guy. Yuki finally came to a conclusion. Hmm, never mind, then. Since we're enemies, this timing is impeccable. Before I move my base to the east, I can see just how strong the strongest demon lord is for myself, Yuki answered, practically taunting Guy. An overwhelming sense of excitement welled from his heart. He had been hiding his full strength all this time, but he had to let loose against the strongest of the demon lords, if he wanted even an inkling of a chance. The thought of failure never crossed his mind as he stepped forward. Yuki was incredibly confident, so much so, that he wagered he could beat absolutely anyone in a one-on-one -on -one fight. He saw Kranoa go berserk, which only reminded him of how dangerous she was. But that was all there was to it. It would be a tough battle, but he was sure that he would come out of top if he gave it his all. She wasn't alone though, there were still several hostile demon lords with her. That being Leon and Luminos. And that good-natured Rimuru, too, had surely guessed Yuki's true intentions. However, this time is different. This bad feeling was due to the man standing in front of him. Yuki understood this, but still decided to face the challenge face to face. Oh, do you think you can defeat me? Guy smirked. I suppose. I plan to defeat you sometime in the future anyway. I'm just doing this a bit ahead of schedule. Rain and misery spread in anger. They really wanted to kill him, but without Guy's permission, they didn't even dare to speak. Guy is the absolute authority, and it would be disrespectful to worry for his safety. Guy is normally fickle. Unless he recognizes his opponent as worthy, he will crush the enemy mercilessly. Rain and Misery worked to get his approval, and if they caused any trouble, he wouldn't hesitate to kill them. Guy's strength is very strong and it's easy to beat them both. Laplace could not move a muscle. If Laplace tried to save Footman, Rain would fight back. Although Guy and the other primordials are outnumbered, key difference in class was insurmountable. If they were only fighting Rain and Misery, then they could probably figure out a way to pull through. But with Guy here too, they had no chance of winning. To Laplace, Yuki challenging Guy was suicide. Surprisingly, considering the circumstances, Laplace is still thinking of ways to escape, that resilience is one of Laplace's greatest strengths. He knew Yuki was strong too, 
even though he continued to hide his true strength from his comrades. Laplace doesn't know if it's enough to fight Guy or not. If Yuki doesn't win, Laplace plans to save Footman and run with Ter. Yuki will surely catch up with Laplace's plan and act accordingly. This can only be done because of their trust in each other. The problem is with Rain and Misery though. Nor are they ordinary enemies. They wouldn't sit back and let him get a chance to help Footman. Laplace is rooted in the area. He had to weigh his every move carefully. While his mind was working on a solution, something unexpected happened. Hey, let him go, Guy ordered Misery. There was no way she'd go against his order. She quickly released Footman. Laplace began to think more positively, but things didn't seem that easy. Don't worry, if you manage to beat me, I'll let you guys go. I won't touch even a hair on you guys. Guy's challenge contradicted itself. If they could beat Guy, wouldn't they be able to just walk away anyway? His declaration was troubling. The situation was becoming increasingly hopeless. He prayed that Yuki would win as he watched the battle. Yuki was the first to move. With full confidence in his immunity to magic and skill, he fearlessly launches a kick at Guy. His kick was sharp, heavy, and combined with a timid one. At first, his foot closes to sweep Guy's legs, before squirting upwards to land a clean uppercut. Despite Yuki that he was the one to land a destructive kick, he ended up scrunching in the face. Tisk, just how built are you? He grumbled with a click of the tongue. His anti-skill is invincible and can penetrate all the defenses of his enemies. However, Guy stood still, unaffected by Yuki's hit. It was as if he was feeling no pain. He did nothing trickery. Guy's body was just harder than a diamond. Being both tough and flexible, little could stand in his way. Well described how strong Guy's strength is. Ha ha ha, that tickled. I'd hardly call this a fight. Entertain me more, or I'll kill everyone here. Guy laughed as he ignited a small flame in his palm. It was the elemental magic. Napalm burst, a jet of fire shaped like a dragon, diving into its target with a long and narrow body. Its goal is to relentlessly attack the target until they are toasted. Burning to several thousand degrees, any normal person will turn to charcoal in an instant. This flame dragon closed in on Yuki. It's a waste of effort. Yuki shouted. Magic doesn't work on me. He was about to take another careless swing at Guy when suddenly a shiver ran down his spine and he jumped away. Ho, your instincts are quite sharp, Guy said with a smile. Yuki had no time to react, as he fell to the ground and rolled, trying to put out the fire. Without a doubt, the anti-skill effect prevented Yuki from being harmed by Guy's magic. However, at the same time, the allegedly nullified magical fire is still burning. Realizing this in time, he chose to put out the fire, despite making it look like he was a buffoon. And from Guy's reaction, a scary thought settled in Yuki's mind. While he didn't want to admit it, he had to make sure. Unexpectedly Guy would give him an answer, he took a chance and asked while standing up, why didn't you attack me again? Are you actually trying to fight me fair and square? Ah ha ha ha, don't play dumb. Surely you have realized by now that I have already discovered the secret behind your power. His anti-skill was versatile and could cancel any form of power it encountered, but when it was used against arts, which were made by fusing magic and a skill, he could not nullify both of them at the same time. That was its only flaw, his only weakness. All physical enhancements aside, Yuki was still human. Even if he could fight toxins with antibodies, he could not live without oxygen. The weaknesses of his humanity, Yuki now realized, put him at a disadvantage. Guy stood there casually. I know someone who can cancel out magic perfectly, but I would still win in a fight. That's because they couldn't cancel anything other than magic. As far as I know, there is no way to completely defend against the laws of physics in this world. When you specialize in one thing, you'll be vulnerable to another. But you don't only seem to be able to counter magic, but skills as well. Guy, looking down on Yuki, revealed his thoughts without attacking any further. His lax attitude was all calculated. It would have been easy for Guy to kill Yuki outright, but that wouldn't have been fun. Instead, Guy wanted to destroy Yuki's confidence first, and then watch him admit defeat in despair.